Thanks for watching and let's calculate the area not of an ellipse but of a super ellipse where you replace 2 by n. And here's what it looks like. So it's like an ellipse but has slightly more rounded corners. And yet we can still calculate the area fairly easily. For this let's solve for y in terms of x. So y over 3 to the n is 1 minus x over 2 to the n. And I know I'm supposed to put absolute values, but we'll get rid of them very soon. So then, taking nth roots, we get y over 3 equals, again, plus minus, but doesn't matter, 1 minus x over 2 to the n, nth root. And finally, y is 3 times 1 minus x over 2 to the n to the nth root. And now let's look back at the picture of the super ellipse. Well, notice there is some kind of symmetry evolved because each quadrant has the same area. So really all we need to do is calculate four times the area in the first quadrant this is why you can assume everything is positive. And so the area that we want is just 4 times the integral from 0 to 2. Why 2? Because that's what makes y 0 of y dx, which is 3 times 1 minus x over 2 to the n of 1 over n dx. So once we calculate that integral, we have the area of our super ellipse. So let's do it. Now, in order to calculate that integral, you would think just to use a u sub x over 2, but no. Here we want to be a little bit more aggressive, and we want to use the u sub u equals x over 2 to the n. And you'll see soon why we need this. So if we let u be x over 2 to the n, then first of all u of 0 becomes 0 to the n, which is 0. u of 2 is 1 to the n, which is 1. That's not the problem. The problem is calculating dx in terms of du. But notice if u is x over 2 to the n, then x over 2 is u of 1 over n. And so x is 2 times u of 1 over n, and then dx becomes 2, and then the derivative of this, 1 over n, u of 1 over n minus 1 du. And now we can just plug this in, so the area now becomes, we still have the 4 from the 4 quadrants, we have the 3, and integral from 0 to 1 of, so this becomes 1 minus u to the 1 over n, u of 1 over n minus 1, and then we have this 2 over n du. Do you? And then this 2 will also come out very soon. Now, although this looks very complicated, I have done an integral of this form in another video, and the result was as follows. If you calculate the integral of 1 minus t to the m times t to the n, it's just m factorial times n factorial over the sum n plus n plus 1 factorial. And indeed, here it is of the same form, except we're using u instead of t. And the only difference is, here the exponents, they're fractional. So instead of using factorial, you have to use what's called the gamma function. And then, if you plug this into this formula, the result is as follows. So we still have this 4 from the quadrants, the 3 from the axis of the ellipse, and this 2, I just pulled it out. And now we need 1 over n factorial, which is the same thing as gamma of 1 over n plus 1. 
1 over n minus 1 factorial, so 1 over n minus 1 plus 1 of that gamma, so 1 over n, gamma of 1 over n, and then this 1 over n. And lastly, we need the analog of n plus n plus 1 factorial. So we have 1 over n, that is the m, the 1 over n minus 1, that is the n. Now, plus 1 because of this plus 1 factorial, and then plus 1 because we're using gamma. And the nice thing is this simplifies the minus 1 and the 1 cancels out, and you get gamma of 2 over n plus 1. So we have 4 times 3 times 2, and then again the denominator is gamma of 2 over n plus 1. Now for the numerator, this is actually a very nice simplification. Because there is a formula that says, and it's similar to saying kind of n plus 1 factorial is n factorial times something. Well, here we have gamma of 1 over n plus 1. That is the previous term, gamma of 1 over n times that term. And look, it's precisely what appears here. So this term that I boxed, just becomes gamma of 1 over n plus 1 again. And so in the end, this just becomes gamma of 1 over n plus 1 squared. Ta-da! And that is the area of the super ellipse in terms of gamma functions. So to recap, if you have a super ellipse, let's say x over 2 to the n plus y over 3 to the n equals 1. The area is 4 because of the 4 quadrants, 3 from that y, 2 from that x, and times this weird gamma function. And of course, there's nothing special about 2 and 3. If you have axes a and b, then the only thing you need to replace is this thing. So it's 4 times, I guess, b times a, which is the same thing as a times b times this gamma function. Now, here's a more interesting question. Does this agree with the definition of the area of a regular ellipse, which is just 4 pi a b? Well, let's see. The regular ellipse would be for n equals 2. So let's see what happens when we plug in n equals 2. Then we get 4ab times gamma of 1 half plus 1, which is 3 halves. So 3 halves squared over 2 halves plus 1. So it's uh, 2, gamma 2. But gamma 2, that is just 1 factorial, which is 1. So we can ignore it. Gamma of 3 halves. I have done that in a separate video on half derivatives. And the result was that gamma 3 halves, it's square root of pi over 2. Square. And then, well, this becomes pi over 4. So indeed, we get 4ab times pi over 4. And indeed, in the end, we get pi ab. So it does agree with the area of an ellipse. How cool is that? And also, by the way, if n equals 1, I believe you just get a diamond. And in that case, I think the, the numerator becomes 1, and the denominator becomes gamma of 3, so 2 factorial. And I think you just get 2ab, which again is also very nice. So a nice geometric fact. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.